prior to any words prior to any expectations of something to be heard something that will be understood before that who is here now If there were no more words, ever, either sensed from outside or even heard inside, neither mind nor intuition. If there were no more words ever in any form, what would still remain? If there were no feelings also. So right now, suppose everything started to fade away. This moment, something does click, and outside world is gone, including this body. When someone does another click, thoughts are gone. Don't think about it. Another click, emotions are gone. Are you still there? They're going one by one, you see. So something remains. The world is gone, cannot be perceived anymore. All senses are closed. The ring stopped working, eyesight stopped working, sensory touch stopped working, taste stopped working. All senses are gone. Smell stopped working. On the going of which of the senses do you go? You still don't go, isn't it? And suppose thoughts stop working. Have you gone? But emotion is still there. Now emotion also stop working. None of this movement is happening. What still remains? And how is that that still remains touched by any of this? So it can be said that the purpose of the mind is to keep us distracted from this that still remains and keep us distracted with that which is just appearing and disappearing. And how does it do that? Through its constant interpretation, through the constant commentary. And you'll notice this if you're new to satsang, that everything that is being spoken in satsang also, this mind is trying to contribute and say yes, yes, no, no, yes like this, no like this, he's right, he's wrong about this. You see? So this interpreter is completely clueless. 
about what really is and yet as you often see in the world it still has opinions we see in the world also many times that could be completely clueless about something and still have strong opinions about it the mind is like this it has no idea about the nature of reality and still likes to contribute it likes to participate and wants to teach us about it and satsang is introducing us to the better teacher satsang is introducing us to the better teacher which is your own intuitive presence that which you call the satguru within the own heart which uses the external embodiment the human embodiment of the master to communicate till you are ready to listen to your own presence till we are not so distracted by name and form so it can start by seeming like it is name and form which is real and that which is nameless and formless is abstract or unreal and it becomes clearer and clearer that it is actually that which arises as name and form which is not eternal which is not timeless which is therefore unreal and that nameless and formless witnessing of this which comes and goes which doesn't go anywhere which is timeless which is eternal unhurt by anything and how do you find that how do you find this one the eternal one by definition that which is eternal must already be here that which is timeless must be ever present the only trouble is that we look for it as if it is an object i am looking for myself okay we go looking for it as if it is something to find then it is bound to be a very frustrating journey because it cannot be found as an object it is my weird stories of some who could say i have been searching for 30 years most of my life i've been a seeker i'm so frustrated with this journey because we're looking for the self as if it is some object to be found either within the body or outside the body somewhere it is not that who is aware of the seeking If we say I am seeker, then there is a sense of seeking that I am aware of. 
this I that is aware of this key, who is this one? The one that is aware of all movements. Is that also moving? Is it coming and going? Is that separate from you? So the seeker means we are seeking in the wrong direction. We are seeking on the outside. I am seeking. This I am is a portal that goes both ways. So if you want to come to the truth of who am I, okay, this is a little bit subtle. So, so I am is here, I am here. Now we are trying to find who is this I. But in the trying to find this I, we make it more complex by making adding on to the sense I am the attribute of seeking something. Then this I am, which was unassociated, now became I am a seeker. and innumerable attributes you can attach to this amnes. I am like this, I am like that, I am doing this, I am doing that, I am going here, I am going there, I am good, I am bad, I am terrible, I am hopeful, I am awful. Keep attaching Many, many attributes to this amnes. But what are we looking for? We are looking for the I which is prior to this. So, way into the phenomenal realm, the way to operate as a person is to keep attaching things to the sense I am. Keep believing that something can be attached to the sense I am. And the entire point of satsang is to drop these ideas that we have been attaching to ourselves. And no concept, no idea is worthy enough. to get our belief, to be attached to this. Not even concepts like I am God or I am free. They are meaningless. So first we come to this unassociated being. That it is just being. It is not being anything. Not I am something. Not even I am nothing. Just I am. And this is completely true right now. There is nothing you have to do to get there. It is already true.
don't try to stop anything also and then what happens there is a sense of space the voice of the mind doesn't have any power and this is the end of suffering because it is the end of resistance being is just being and there is complete allowing the body mind to function exactly as it is functioning active or passive according to mind's plan or not according to mind's plan it is all happening on its own it always has been only now that we get to see that it is like this so being is just being then what can happen although actually this much is enough actually this much is enough but what can happen and is happening for many is that it becomes clear that i am aware even of being you see so this is what i mean by i amness being a portal which can go both ways we saw how it can be used to pretend to be a person an ego by attaching attributes to the sense i am and now we can see that how this i amness also points back at the truth of what you are and we see that there is awareness of even this presence this being the sense i am i am aware of it we see that this awareness is prior even to the presence itself and we find that there is nothing to speak of here because there are no qualities there are no attributes all of that requires the presence of being and we left that behind because we came the other way now from the i am to the i that which is aware what does that look like is there an entity that owns this awareness it was one sri ramana maharishi used to say this i is the eternal one and the recognition this i is the timeless 
awareness within which what he used to call the sense I I which we call the sense I am is born and it dissolves back in for this I is what we call the self we call the absolute the pure knowingness the pure awareness bereft of all qualities and this is true about you right now you are that i am that we are one because you are aware now and you are aware that you are aware So as we go this way to the root of what I am, then the truth cannot be missed. But initially what can happen is that this truth can seem deeply disappointing to the mind. The mind can say, oh, this was it, but nothing. Because the mind actually didn't find anything. No fireworks needed to happen, no great awakening experience also needs to happen. No states of bliss need to come. They can all be there, they can come for some. But for some time, for some it can be completely the sober scene. But try as it might, the mind cannot deny the truth of what you are. 